Okay, we've just come in from outside and we brought our system in. It's full, but first I'm going to show you if you don't have a, uh, a hose bib outside, how you can pre-charge the unit in, in the house on top of the kitchen sink. First, let's make sure that you have a, a nice padded uh, absorbent, uh, either a towel or in this case here, it's a ShamWow. And uh, just in case we've got any water dripping, we're, we're going to protect the, the granite counter, keep it from scratching it and absorb any water to keep it from running off the floor. Uh, I'm using just a traditional uh, two-line uh, diverter valve here to where I can attach this off the tip of the faucet. In this case here, we've got a perfect scenario where I can remove the, the aerator, adapt a one of the many adapters that come in this, in this particular kit. And I'm going to screw this on. And got it all nice and tight. Um, I've already done a temperature check here. Uh, with my valves open, I know exactly where I can have my hot and cold. Most, uh, in most cases, normal operation, you want cold. But in this case, we've got 52 degree water. So I'm going to adjust the temperature up so that we can speed the rate of production up and, and get it to its optimum operating temperature, which is 77 degrees. And that way I know that I'm getting close to my 50 gallon a day production. Uh, which is the rating of the membrane. Keep in mind, you installers, that every one degree of Fahrenheit, less than 77 degrees Fahrenheit, you lose approximately 2% of the rated production rate. So if I've got 52 degrees of water, 2% times that, I've lost pr production of approximately 50% of my rated 50 gallon per day membrane production rate. So Technically speaking, under these operating temperatures, I'm going to get about 25, 26 gallons of production per day. Now, in the summertime, when the water temperature increases at this, at this particular property, it'll probably get up to about 60, 62, maybe even a little bit warmer. So don't worry about that. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn our feed lines on. We're going to find out which two of these lines is the feed line. And it is the top. I'm going to divert that. This is the feed line. I'm going to apply this to the to the regulator, and then I'm going to divert my flow. I'm going to maximize, optimize my temperature. I'm going to bring my HM digital meter back. I'm going to get a temperature reading, and I've got 70. Five degrees, divert the flow. I have 75 degree water at 256 parts per million feeding the system. I have my D line with a nice little heavy shutoff valve just so that the, my D line can hang down into the kitchen sink so that it's not drooling all over the place here. And what I could do in this case here, because of this particular type of diverter valve system, I know that the opposing line here is a drain line off the tip of the faucet. So what I'm going to do right now is demonstrate by pushing in the collet of the D line and pulling my little weighted uh, device out and attach my waistline. And now if we can focus in on this, my waistline's dripping into the, into the kitchen sink. So I have feed going to it, and I have waste. Here, my FA2 is still uh, attached. And uh, right now, I'm gonna just verify one more time. I've got water coming from the system. I'm showing pressure on my gauge. Nice flow. If we can focus back up on the gauge here, bam. There we go, we're at zero back pressure. My waistline is open and clear to the drain. This device, uh, by the way, I still have my, my SQ uh, device hooked up, my, my purge device. I'm going to remove that line right now. And while it's at zero back pressure, I can still remove that line. And I'm going to pin that right now. And now these pieces here I can put back in my, my installation kit 
save it for the next install. And uh, when after I'm done with my uh, with my installation, I've got my my sink drilled. In this case here, it's a granite countertop. You installers be careful drilling holes for granite. Make sure that you've covered that in your installation fee. Uh, just in case you crack it, make sure you're covered with insurance. Um, while I'm going to complete the rest of the installation, I'm going to go uh, uh, drill my, my sink. I'm going to attach my feed water uh, adapter valve underneath off the cold water stopcock um, and, my, and my drain. Uh, meanwhile, this system, while I complete the rest of that work, is now fill, is filling up and getting ready for under-the-counter installation. So this here is just another way of pre-charging the unit on site, taking all the necessary steps and procedures and precautions to protect the counter, making sure that the system is once again hydraulically sound. I can do my leak inspections, making sure I'm not leaking uh, under the control valve or at the tank where the manifold joins the tank. Uh, my filter housings are complete. I have no water dripping. And this way, it's in front of you while you're doing the rest of your work, and you can actually witness and, and verify uh, that everything is nice and sound. It's a good, uh, it's a good practice to do this type of uh, thing. Now, when the system is full and shut down, and once again, we will register pressure approximately just a hair above line pressure that we witnessed out front as being 50 pounds, and on the PW gauge, when the system is full and the bladder is full all the way to the last drop and it's pushed out all of the squeeze water, we will see a, just a hair above line pressure on the PW gauge. And all you have to do is bleed the pressure off by turning the feed valves off or the, the diverter, break the pressure at the, at the uh, FA2 line. This gauge will drop, remove my gauge and repin it and the system is full and ready for shutdown. Now it's always good practice to keep in mind that if you're hooking up an ice maker, make sure that the ice maker line is turned off prior to starting up a dry, on a dry start. This way we're starting up a wet start. It would be okay if this is full and shut down. You can turn your ice maker line on when you convert this from countertop here to underneath the kitchen counter. Once again, turn that the, the, uh, the ice maker line on, go back to the refrigerator, remove ice cubes from the ice cube tray, turning on the ice cube machine to clear any air that may have been drawn into that line so you can evacuate the air and get the ice maker line completely sound with water. And that's it for, for the uh, in-home uh, prefill.